together, Lord, bind us together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together. Bind us together in In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. At the end of the eight days of the Easter joy, we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. The entrance antiphon is saying, like newborn infants, you must long for the pure spiritual milk, that in him you may grow to salvation and to mercy. Alleluia. So in fact, this mercy of God is celebrated today and is bound us together in love. What a beautiful song to start, especially that we are meditating how can we grow in this new phase in our parish life when we'll be hearing about the uh, new election for the parish pastoral council and we'll be asked and invited to pray for that and also to do uh, our bit in that work. We pray for one another. Uh, we pray uh, in all the intentions that you brought this morning. And at the beginning of this celebration, calling to mind all our sins, let us ask for the forgiveness believing in God's mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father.
Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal feast kindled the fate of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all might grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of believers was united, heart and soul. No one claimed for his own use anything that he had, as everything they owned was held in common. The Apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with great power, and they were all given great respect. None of their members was ever in want as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from them to present it to the apostles. It was then distributed to any members who might be in need. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. John. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten by God. And whoever loves the father that begot him loves the child whom he begets. We can be sure that we love God's children if we love God himself and do what he has commanded us. This is what loving God is, keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not difficult. Because anyone who has been begotten by God has already overcome the world. This is the victory over the world, our faith. Who can overcome the world? Only the man who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who came by water and blood, not with water only, but with water and blood, with the Spirit as other witness, since the Spirit is the truth. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for the fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, peace be with you and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and they said to them again, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sin you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sin you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, we have seen the Lord, he answered, unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand, put it into my sight. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life. Through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Here we are eight days after this great news of the resurrection of the Lord that we celebrated together with great joy. And here it is, Thomas. Doubtful Thomas, as they call him, that I think 
Many in the world today are in the same situation like him. Well, we can say that the world is divided for those who do not believe in anything, atheist. And we had prayed for them on Good Friday. There was a special prayer for those who do not believe in God. And let's hope that they will be enlightened. Another big part are deists, those who recognize that there is some God. But in the different forms, in different religions, different traditions, and as we are the international community, we maybe know the other faiths that are from our homeland or maybe also our neighbors here. So many people know that God do exist. Many worship him in different ways. But uh, we also know it from literature, for, from philosophy, from theology. A lot is known about God. But as long as, as he is not my God, then they're just news that make no big difference in the life of human being. And the difference that is made that he becomes mine. This life-changing event uh, is the discovery that God is my God. Then he appears as a great mystery that opens its door to me. For us Christians, it is the just understanding that he conquered death and he is bigger than that. We all have fear of dying, of death, what is on the other side. But he has risen, he has won, and so we believe that that's a new uh, intensity of this uh, faith in his merciful love. Such an encounter is called conversion. It is the beginning of the new path of life. Everything is subordinated to it. And it's very interesting. Sometimes this conversion comes after some time in the community. Look at Thomas the Apostle. Famous Thomas, who was then the founder of the Catholic faith in India, right? In the beautiful part of Kerala, they're all proud to be the apostles of St. Thomas, who started this church very, very many centuries ago when the, when the missionaries came. They found and discovered this fantastic uh, church that has a very beautiful old Siromala Bar, Siromala Ankar, and other traditions. And they are nodding, oh, this time I had it right. And they speak Mala Yalam, and not other way that I said last week. Thank you for your corrections. So sometimes you might spend years and not convert. You might be in the Catholic community, like our community. Imagine, Thomas was for three years in this seminary, going with Jesus. And yet, when the Lord appeared, and of course Thomas was not there, he said, I will not believe until I will touch him. So his personal conversion uh, or this openness or just tough. Maybe he was just the one, and some people are like that. They, they, they need to experience something, touch. Otherwise, it's so hard for them to believe. And Thomas can be their patron. So when he met the risen Lord after the eight days, it was like to fulfill the wish of those who have some difficulty, uh, expression of God's mercy, of Jesus' mercy. He was able to touch Jesus. And then he simply said, but it's important, my Lord, and my God, my personal. You know, I remember... When I, one of the older priests that I met here many years ago, he said, my personal friend, Jesus. I was reflecting of that. I said, well, all my, all my years of theology, I never dared to say that. But this old man told me something very important. He is my personal friend who died for me. My friend, Jesus. So that was really what Thomas was saying. And that really was something that maybe we experience in our life, or maybe being in this community, we are still waiting to experience. We never know. But it's important to be open, because yet another Easter might be a chance for us. And in last century, the biggest mystic that the books have been sold all over the world, and it was called the biggest mystic of the 20th century, was Sister Faustina Kowalska. Very simple woman. Only three classes of education. Very poor family. She had difficulty to enter to the convent because she was too poor. She had to work out to get there. And then when she got there, because she was not educated, she was doing the simplest jobs. Night shifts, 
cleaning, uh, bakery, all the other stuff for the order, because the heads of the order were these, you know, royalties. And Jesus appeared to her. Like he surprised us to being born in Bethlehem, the poor part of the Holy Land. He likes appear to the poor, to the simple in heart. And he told her that he is merciful. And it was after the great war that so many lost life. And right before the Second World War. And he appeared in Krakow, so few miles from the Auschwitz, Birkenau. The place of horror when Nazi Germans killed six millions of people, many Jews, but also Poles, Russians, others. I am merciful. I am mercy. And she said in her diary, my Jesus, I trust in you. It's again personalized, my Jesus. And so today we repeat, Jesus, I trust in you. But we need to add, is it my Jesus? Is he my friend? Is he the one that is my savior and redeemer? My Lord and my God. Today, we have an opportunity to think about that again. If we have in ourselves, and I have to tell you, sometimes I am like this doubtful Thomas. I would like to touch, to experience, to know. But this experience of our parish is an experience that helped me also in my conversion. To understand that together we can do more, better, if we trust each other. And today is the beginning of the process of the election to the new PPC and to continuing the beautiful tradition of our parish that you've done for so many years. And I hope this PPC will be more international, more open for the diversity of our parish and also very well rooted on this Scottish tradition that for so many years you so faithfully um, are uh, realizing here with so many groups and so many activities. So let's pray today that we might be open for that, that we might want to enrich this community with our gifts, that we might be the ones who had the courage like Thomas to say, my Lord and my God, my community, I want to take care of it. I want to enrich it with my gifts. We will be hearing more about that at the end of the Mass. But now, because I got the signals from our little ones that I should finish, I listen to them, I listen to you, thank you for your courage to say that, so please stand, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. God and not made unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He'll come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for one another, for our parish community and for the universal church and for the world torn by so many wars and conflicts that the mercy of God might prevail. We pray for the church throughout the world. We pray that we may be courageous in announcing the gospel to all whom we meet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Pope Francis 
all bishops, priests, and religious. We pray that the Lord will grant them new strength and love as they guide his people. We remember especially the clergy and the religious brothers and sisters who minister to persecuted Christians and pray that God our Father may protect them in their work. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We continue to pray for peace, especially in the Holy Land, in Ukraine, in Yemen, and in Haiti. Risen Jesus, may the gift of your peace come to all who seek it. May the light of Easter convert the hearts of those in civic authority, that they may work fearlessly towards reconciliation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God, we bring before you all those among us who suffer from poverty, illness, marginalization, and loneliness. May the resurrection of your son, Jesus, bring them consolation and inspire us to welcome and support them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our brothers and sisters who have been recently baptized and received in the church and for their families. We pray that they may be a sign of God's mercy and love to all. We entrust to God's care all families and children that the holidays may bring them rest and new energy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our parish community. As we rejoice in the resurrection, we ask our Lord Jesus to renew our friendship and our commitment to announcing the gospel. We remember our sick and housebound parishioners and pray for all those who have gone before us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us now add our own intentions. Our deceased brothers and sisters who asked us, uh, whom, whose close uh, relatives ask us to pray, modlimy się za świętej pamięci Beaty Foyu, drugą rocznicę śmierci, intencja od koleżanki Dari. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty Father, you showed us your mercy through the words of Jesus in the gospel uh, to the interaction with Thomas, the doubtful Thomas and recently with the revelation to Sister Faustina Kowalska. Help us to remember and to show uh, your merciful love to our brothers and sisters in need, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
say, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by the joy of the resurrection and uh, of your mercy, we may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to claim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from dead, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Ninian and Triduana, patron saints of our parish, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Our personal friend Jesus is here with us in the Holy Eucharist. He's inviting all the children. Oh, yes, they have the break, so they can relax, you can say. Come on. Yeah, I'm so grateful that you are here with us. And all the other children, please, ragazzi, ragazze, venite pure. Ecco, volentieri, dai. All the others, please come in. Chodźcie, proszę, zapraszam. Yes, come step forward. We have the youth that received the first communion, and teenagers too are welcome. Come on. Yes, you're welcome. You received the communion a week ago. Have courage. Very good. Uh, fantastic. And we'll be raising hands up to heaven. And, oh, yes, yes, you're welcome. You, can, you come with mom. Mom, come with. Oh, yeah. A little bit, yes, shy at the beginning. We raise up high to heaven and we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And now you turn here and put the hands like that to show that you want to serve Jesus. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord and merciful uh, Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Now, smile to Jesus. Show how you beautifully smile. All girls are smiling so nicely, and you as well. So now let's wave to, wave to one another, and let's turn, and let's wave to the whole church, okay? Oh, yes. Look how the church waves to us. Peace be with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fantastic. And now you go step by step to send and to share the sign of peace with the whole church, with Mama and Papa. Peace be with you. Pokój z Wami. Pokój z Wami. Pace e bene. Pace e bene.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We'll be listening to a very important announcement concerning the, uh, our future PPC, an invitation that I hope many of you will accept and will take to their heart. Good morning. Over the weeks of Lent, uh, you have heard from the many and varied groups in the parish, and we hope that these presentations have helped you uh, to inform you of all the things that go on uh, within the parish in St. Ninians, and also of the possibilities that you have to help in the future. Now, I know some people already um, have, uh, have volunteered their services, but the prime function of the parish council is to support the parish priest in the running of the parish and to support our parish and parishioners in our community. That's the main job of the council. And this group is key to the smooth running of the parish and the organization. It was established originally in 1978, and its members are usually elected to serve for three years. But because of COVID and the various um, or temporary priests that we've had over the, the last few years, we've not had elections for some time, and it's now very uh, overdue that we update the council. The main areas of the focus of the parish council are, are faith formation and liturgy. And we have a variety of different jobs within the council that cover those different areas. Now, our parish is changing. Father has brought uh, with him a, a large Polish community uh, which fills the parish with life and prayer and song, as you saw last week. They have, the Polish community have got to get used to us, and we have also got to get used to the Polish community and respect each other's traditions. But we are all united in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. That's what we all say every Sunday, and therefore we need to update our parish council and have members of the Polish community on the council, as well as Father said a minute ago, we are an international parish. We have Indians, we have Africans, we have Italians. So we want that to be reflected in the parish council as well. If you may remember at the very beginning of Lent, I mentioned uh, Father um, Dorimple at one time talked about diffidence and the fact that when people were asked to do something, they said, oh no, I can't possibly do it. Uh, that's diffidence. Well, of course you can do it. We've all got a huge range of skills. And we're looking for young people. Now, let me qualify that and tell you that young people in this parish means everybody below the age of 80. <laughs> and some of you might be thinking that, oh, well, I've done it before. I've done my bit. No, you haven't. Not until such times as the Paschal candle is lit and your box is taken out of here, will you have done it. You are always here to serve our community, and you have a huge range of skills to help with that. So, I would like you to do something um, in a minute, but just before that, you'll notice at the back of the church there is a form which says uh, that I would like to be a member of the PC, of the Parish Council. Please consider carefully uh, consider what your talents are, consider your age and your enthusiasm, and please fill it in, and we can uh, organize our election. We are looking for about 10 members or 12 members of the council. If we have more than that, if we have 20, then we will have an election. If we have about 10, then those members will be the automatic new parish council. And we'll give you a fortnight this week and next week to consider what you want to do and then in three weeks' time, we will announce the membership of the council. And just to remind you what the different groups are, at the back of the newsletter, you will see a whole list of different activities. So you might want to just volunteer for one of them right away um, when you see that. So that's what we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks, praying and considering about what our talents are and how we can serve, and then we will um, have the elections to the council in three weeks' time. Now, finally, what I would like you to do, please, is to 
Father likes us to raise our hands. So I would like you to raise your hands like this. Everybody put your hands up like that. Okay, George. You see, many hands make light work. <laughs> so the more people that contribute and help, the easier it will be for the parish to be run and for, for Father to get support. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Des, and it's also the time to say thank you for all this great work that the Parish Council has done for all these years. And one correction, you said less than 80. If you'd be 80 plus and be young in spirit like George is, you can be 80 plus and be part of this uh, Parish uh, Council as well. And then I think uh, also the young people who are quite new in the Parish are welcome. Then I really think that this international flavor will be uh, in the future PPC. Let's say we just want to bake a fantastic Scottish-Polish pie with Italian, African, Indian flavors in it. And we hope that it will be really there uh, for the years to come. And I'm looking forward because I need your help. I've learned so much in this uh, nine months that I've been here, and especially in this time of Lent when you presented this various activities, various apostolates and missions that you've done and we are doing as a parish now. And I can tell you that this was very generous for all of those who spoke that uh, three times on Saturday and two times on Sunday you were speaking. And this Polish community has really appreciated a lot because they didn't know about many of these activities. And I am really uh, very grateful for that. And so those who spoke and those who sit in this parish council, thank you very much. May God really um, give you all the blessings. And those who just feel, oh, I, I might be, but maybe feel diffident, maybe feel like, like, like this was said by this, please. Come forward, talk to Des and to me at the back of the church. And there is also Moira, who's done the, 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 the job for so many years, George. And so please, and don't be shy to ask uh, and maybe to put your name into that list. And of course, now there is a prayer of sending for those who go with the Holy Communion. There are people who are uh, helping and bringing the Eucharist, the Jesus, our Savior and our friend, to whom uh, housebound and ill. So let's say that prayer together. We have that. Would you, would you bring me that? The song. Okay. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and protect you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And we go back with song and with the bell ringing uh, because we are still in the joy of the risen Lord and with the empty tomb that is showing that he has risen. He is truly risen. Alleluia. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. <laughs>